Hello folks, this is Jay with this episode of Jay's Tip of the Day. I've had a bunch of students come to my class lately and it's all due to this shooting that happened in Clearwater, Florida two weeks ago and it's a talk of the town. And I have to make another video for my students who's been through my class or who are planning to come to my basic class to try to explain to them what the difference between the stand your ground law is and the state statute on the use of force up to deadly force. They are two separate things. A lot of misconceptions out there that people think that the stand your ground law pretty much encompasses everything to include the use of deadly force. It does not. It's two separate things, folks. So I'm going to explain to you and dive in very deep so you can figure out what the difference between the two are and explain to you each one differently. Now I'm going to dive in deep into the stand your ground law. I'm going back in time, back to the colonial days, back to way back and sometime in the 1800s when they wrote something called the Castle Doctrine. Basically what that meant was if somebody broke into your home, castle, and was going to harm you or your family, you can use force or deadly force to protect yourself and you did not have a duty to retreat. A duty to retreat means you did not have to flee or run away. Now before 2005, there was the Castle doc Doctrine pretty much only encompasses inside your home. But once you stepped outside into a public area, if somebody tried to harm you, whether it be with a weapon or even a firearm, if you could flee or retreat, you had to. So after 2005, when Florida passed the Stand Your Ground Law, which happens to be one of the first states to do this, the Castle Doctrine was now extended to all public places. So now you no longer had a duty to retreat in a public place and if somebody tried to harm you with a weapon or physical violence, you can meet force with force and use force up to deadly force to protect you if you were in fear of serious bodily harm or imminent death. So that's what that means folks. The stand your ground law is completely separate and different from the state statute that cover the use of force up to deadly force. Now I'm going to talk to you about the state statute that covers the use of force or deadly force. Remember, it's a different statute. It's not the same thing as the stand your ground law. Now, this statute for deadly force is pretty clear. What it states is you can use force up to deadly force if you are in serious or grave bodily harm and or imminent death. Also, you can use deadly force if there is a forcible felony in your presence. So you can use force up to deadly force to actually stop the force of a felony. Now, that could be a a rape or a kidnapping, an armed robbery, an active shooter. Those things are just a few examples of, a, of an actual forcible felony that you can use force up to deadly force to stop it. Now, just because the state statute says you can use force up to deadly force to stop a forcible felony doesn't mean you have to. It just states that you can legally do it, but sometimes you got to think outside the box whether or not you getting involved in an armed robbery is the smart Thing to do and the state statute for deadly force is completely different from stand your ground but just remember if you're going to use force up to deadly force you have to be an imminent serious grave bodily harm or in fear of imminent death that is the state statute and you have to abide by that here in the state of Florida so I'm going to recap I just wanted to talk to you about what the difference between the stand your ground law is and the state statute that covers deadly force. And the reason why I'm talking about this a second time is because you see here, this was the Clearwater shooting where a 47 year old individual decided to take the law into his own hands and enforce a parking infraction because these, uh, this couple with their kids was parked illegally in a handicapped spot. And, uh, he kind of stirred the pot and then it got really bad when the boyfriend showed up and violently pushed him to the ground. And then in turn, the guy who started the entire thing, now felt you know in fear of serious bodily harm and uh, drew his firearm and fired one shot center mass killing the uh, the 24 28 year old individual but it's a talk of the town right now because we don't know what the state attorney's office is going to do i've talked about this in a few videos before this so i'm not going to get into it it's really up to the state attorney's off office now to decide whether or not charges will be warranted in this case but i just wanted to talk to you folks about the stand your ground law and the statute on the use of force up to deadly force. So there we go, that's the wrap up. I'm gonna close up my video like I do all my videos and I'm sure you guys have heard this model before, prepare the battlefield for success. 
Thank you. You know what? I, I just remembered this. I've got close to 30 videos online. I've never asked for subscribers. Just didn't really, you know, I didn't want to be one of those teenagers or these young 20 year olds who make all these inappropriate videos just to get subscribers so they can make money. But, you know, I've only got 20 subscribers at this point. Uh, I do have a lot of hours viewed, but I think it's time that I need to get some subscribers so I can get monetized, maybe get some money to help me with these videos because you can clearly see I'm doing these videos in my garage. It's very hot, I'm sweating. I work a full-time job and I do this firearm thing on, on the side pretty much on my days off. So if you can, just subscribe. It'd be great, I really do appreciate it. And come back for any more videos here on my YouTube channel. And you know my motto, I'm not gonna say it again, but thank you. Thank you.